We are looking forward to learning from you. We are looking forward to sharing with you also what we are doing and in a peer review effort also get your contribution to the um, new thread, trend in, the, in our work, which is about going for measuring social inclusiveness and de developing, if needed, a new methodology to assess impact of social inclusion policies. I think that something has to be changed. The global economic and financial crisis in 2008-2009 and its negative impacts made people around the world recognize the importance of social policy and of the environment. The post-2015 development agenda is expected to guide global efforts to realize this commitment. And this provides a unique opportunity to strengthen the social dimension of sustainable development. Pourquoi c'est important de mesurer l'inclusion sociale C'est important pour chacun des pays pour évaluer sa propre position, ses propres performances par rapport à un, un ensemble de critères explicites. C'est important au niveau dynamique pour voir l'évolution de la situation et si on se rapproche de l'objectif de lutte contre la pauvreté et l'exclusion sociale. Et c'est enfin important au niveau de l'évaluation des politiques et de la comparaison de leurs performances dans la poursuite de cet objectif. It's not about economy. It's really not about nations either, it's about people. It's about the civil, uh, the perception of the people living in uh, all these countries. First of all, it's an issue of democracy. Nothing for the people without the people, I'm sure you all know this. Second, it's a question of accuracy. How, without a proper needs assessment with the people who are actually experiencing this situation on the ground, how can we formulate solutions? How can we begin to understand what's going on if we don't talk to the people themselves? And if you speak to indigenous peoples and you, and you also speak to poor people, you find that in many ways, yes, of course, income is a priority, but other elements of um, poverty are a huge priority as well. For instance, not being able to control their own fate, to not be able to have a role in deciding how their lives um, progress. So we have identified groups of excluded populations, and they form a very big percentage of the population. That is why we have started to take interest in issues of social inclusion. How do we empower them so that they can also have a voice in the development debates, so that they can also go ahead and try and create some kind of meaningful livelihood for themselves. And I believe this is what the workshop is all about. Not just to address, but also to monitor and evaluate how some programs which are already in place on social inclusion are really doing. Are they succeeding? Are they failing? If they're succeeding, what can we learn from it? If they are failing, what can we learn from it? And also to, to, to hold stakeholders accountable. I think it's absolutely essential that when you're measuring the situation of people in poverty that you also try to imp imp implicate or uh, get these people involved in the process of defining uh, the indicators and actually some some quite innovative things have been happening on that for instance i remember a project where you got a 50 50 a committee uh, which, which composition was 50 50 academics and people living in poverty in some regions you have better access to data for example i work on latin america we were able to get data that looked at access to secondary education access to housing access to uh, formal jobs and access uh, to things like health care uh, by race and by gender, but those sorts of data are not available for other regions. So I think it's important first to define the concept, develop some sort of common consensus around the concept, and then figure out ways, in some regions you won't be able to get data, but I think you need to remain true and valid to that concept, even if you can't fill in all the data. But I think it's very important to try to understand, even if we aren't going to measure it, that this is a multi-dimensional concept that includes notions of both social services, um, uh, it, lack of discrimination and democracy or some sort of political system that allows for greater participation. Maybe not democracy with votes, but some sort of political, political system that allows for greater voice.
So uh, clearly at local level, data must never exist in a vacuum. A context is needed. And so uh, the, because the definition and the measurement in the local context are always link, likely to preempt or to accompany uh, policy formulation and practical intervention. If we want to have inclusive societies, it's very important that evaluations that we use to evaluate programs and policies are also inclusive. And for me, inclusive and evaluation means that it enables people who belong to all kinds of social groups, including the most vulnerable ones, to contribute to the discourse and share the experiences and vision about the program. Le travail sur la méthodologie de la mesure et sur les évaluations des politiques publiques doit absolument être développé. Il s'agit d'un des objectifs du, du programme MOST de l'UNESCO qui travaille en étroite collaboration avec les autres agences des Nations Unies. Et pour faire face aux, aux conséquences de la crise multidimensionnelle euh, que tous les pays connaissent, il faut absolument aller de l'avant afin d'apporter une réponse et contribuer aux attentes des objectifs du millénaire pour le développement. Notre approche, c'est vraiment de partir de ce que disent et de ce que portent les personnes les plus défavorisées dans les quartiers où on est impliqué. Bien sûr, les, on, on a besoin d'indicateurs. On, on a besoin de savoir combien de gens ne sont pas logés, on a combien, quel est l'échec scolaire. Enfin, je veux dire, des, des choses comme ça sont importantes. On a besoin de voir ça dans la durée. Mais vraiment, pour nous, c'est sûr que ça doit être complété par le savoir qu'apportent les gens eux-mêmes. Les gens ont un savoir à, à cause de leur expérience, payé chèrement. Nous, ce qu'on souhaiterait, c'est que l'UNESCO prenne mieux en compte le savoir des personnes qui vivent dans la pauvreté et arrive à montrer que ce savoir euh, est complémentaire du savoir des universitaires. Et l'UNESCO, qui est le lieu de la culture, euh, on, on, doit, on devrait pouvoir arriver à faire ce croisement ici. C'est généralement que la social inclusion a plusieurs dimensions. So uh, it tackles a lot of issues. It includes a lot of issues such as education, poverty, unemployment, especially youth unemployment, which is very important in the Arab region. So I don't think there is a common indicator for social inclusion because every country or every, uh, every context has different uh, priorities. Uh, but what we need is a general framework to uh, build Uh, measures at each national level. Les données statistiques sont très importantes pour soutenir le plaidoyer et la mobilisation des ressources au titre des projets, programmes et développement pour l'Afrique. Et c'est donc un des piliers de base et qui peut vraiment qui, de, qui dresse en fait le miroir de la réussite d'une politique ou de toute autre action au développement. It's absolutely important to do um, to use a mixed methods approach, by which I mean that's an approach in which we collect some data using surveys and we collect other data using qualitative methods like stakeholder interviews, like focus group discussions. We would like that in 2020, there are 20 million less poor people in the uh, European Union. And to do this, we have chosen several indicators to measure this evolution. And what is very important is that the countries have defined themselves national targets. So uh, Spain, France, uh, Germany, they have described what are the targets, how they are going to bring the uh, poverty population down uh, by an amount that corresponds to the 20 million at the average level. If you're looking at social impacts, you would look at employment standards on the labor market, you would look at income, you would look at access to um, services, access to fundamental rights and public health. So this is what you could call social impacts. The uh, social indicators are getting a lot more visibility and uh, this is something that can be used by stakeholders at the national level to challenge the, the people in the government to, uh, to tell them uh, look we're in this in this is scoreboard and we're actually among the, the, the most the most uh, the lowest performance so what can we do about it? Eh bien, effectivement la crise nous a appris quelque chose de très important c'est à dire que peut-être on est en train de regarder très peu les questions d'inclusion sociale c'est à dire une euh, un des facteurs qui est derrière la crise, c'est le fait qu'on est en train de maximiser uniquement la croissance économique. Et parfois, sans faire attention justement au problème d'inclusion sociale, sans faire attention au fait qu'une grande partie de la population était complètement oubliée par ces mécanismes de croissance économique. Donc, euh, faire les liens 
entre les instruments de mesure et les politiques, c'est très clair, euh, ça peut justement fonctionner dans la mesure où vous avez un système statistique qui est multidimensionnel, qui vous donne des informations pas uniquement par rapport à la croissance économique moyenne, à le, à les, aux questions de production qui, bien sûr, restent des questions centrales, mais aussi quel est le lien entre la, entre la production, entre, si vous voulez, l'efficacité des systèmes économiques, et puis quels sont les bénéfices euh, de, ces, de, de, de ces opportunités, enfin, de, 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 quels sont les bénéfices euh, de la croissance économique pour la population. Therefore, it is very important for them to, and for us, to come together and to have this dialogue and to look for synergies for action in order to, make able, to be able to make proposals that are viable. And we are in a threshold. We can provide a different perspective to how to build public policies with an inclusive component. Academic researchers quite often complain that policymakers ignore their work. At the same time, policymakers know that they could be more convincing if their arguments are evidence based and reflect social reality as reported in academic research. So that both are they are different parties, but they have something some common aims. I believe that the whole problem of, of using the potential of research is that we have find ways to translate the global stock of knowledge that is available into locally relevant knowledge. Mais il me semble que dans les sciences sociales, il faut éviter que toutes les recherches puissent être focalisées sur ce qu'on appelle les thèmes prioritaires. Ce qui n'est pas prioritaire aujourd'hui le sera dans dix ans. Donc nous avons besoin de zones de recherche qui puissent être financées sans qu'il y ait un lien, comment dirais-je, immédiat par rapport à la solution politique. The thing that I feel is a bit missing is that this is an area of, of academic study in its own right, research on research, research use. There's a lot of uh, um, research on this. We also look very specifically at attitudes and perceptions and how are they changing? And, and the, the basic premise of that is that people act on the basis of how they feel. People know that you know exclusion could be around axes of ethnicity, race, place of residence, etc. What we emphasize on is that it's the intersection of these identities that's very important. So nobody is just a woman, because a woman is a very, very heterogeneous group of people. You know, you're a woman, you could be an indigenous woman, you could be an indigenous woman, if you're Bolivian, you could be an indigenous Quechua living in a certain area, and it's the multiplied effects of these identities that actually produces the exclusion, which is why interventions probably need to also take into account this multiplication. For me, what is really interesting is that now in, in the development of regional strategy itself, we, we include for instance, civil society. It's not an easy thing to do because sometimes civil society and the, uh, the national, uh, you know, the countries, they do have uh, some level of friction, uh, and especially in terms of access to services. We started the program of empowering people because really social inclusiveness is about empowering people and it's about participation. And that will bring about equity in my books because uh, if people know what they want, people have ownership, okay? And therefore, they would have a stake in making it work. You need to, to present it uh, to the right people in uh, the most simple terms, not use so many indicators so people are like, uh, okay, what does that mean at the end of the day? And make sure you, you put in there a cost-effectiveness aspect because people in the government have limited budgets and limited resources. So you, may, you have to make sure that this actually relates to that. Uh, budget, so forth and so on. I really do believe that uh, the most program is quite, uh, is create, trying to create a paradigm shift, and it in itself is a paradigm shift, <laughs> okay? Uh, and it is innovative in the sense that it's trying to, to create that link. 
So many have tackled that, so many organizations have tackled that lane before, but they failed because uh, they come at the, at the point where they don't have the leverage. UNESCO has the leverage. It's refreshing to hear what's about what's going on in other parts of the world. So this is for me the main, the main value added and you get to look a bit differently at what's happening in your part of the country. So maybe this is something that could be picked up by UNESCO and uh, um, try to promote uh, what it's spotting in, in one part of the, the, the world uh, and what's good practice to try to promote it in other parts. As social scientists we should have, have a pluralistic approach to our, our engagements with the various forms of evidence. We should have the, the skill set and the disposition that enables us to integrate different forms and sources and, and quality of evidence. If it's a broader category of social scientists more generally, then yes, I mean, part of our job should be to uh, anticipate these, certainly the most major uh, crises that we face. And UNESCO, on its, at its best, is, is about trying to facilitate those kinds of conversations. And it'll be useful for, for policy to the extent it's able to actually add value to that existing conversation, to the extent that putting these different pieces together actually yields uh, insights that wouldn't have been possible if those groups had just been left by themselves. I, I think UNESCO's role is important for three ways. In fact, it's fundamental. First is, as an institution dedicated to scientific inquiry and to education, those are important. First, because uh, this is ultimately a question of scientific matter. We need to develop the concept, we need to develop tools to measure it, we need to evaluate it. That's a social science question that UNESCO is uniquely situated to do. The second is the issue of education. The one variable across all the countries that I'm familiar with, Latin America, education, is the, has the greatest explanatory value in understanding the ability of humans to be able to rise above social mobility, which is ultimately the great lubricant, if you will, for social inclusion. And the third is, because of its global nature, I think UNESCO is very well suited. The United Nations, including UNESCO, has got the ability to track the progress of the use of these indicators and the monitors, and also to continuously assist governments and other stakeholders. Of course, we cannot have a global tool that can be used everywhere. It will have to be modified according to the context of the user. For example, if we were to live here with a global tool, let's say a set of indicators, when I go back to Africa, I will have to modify that to suit the particular context of Africa. I believe the same with Latin America, the same with Asia. But just like the MDGs, something that is a global gliding, guiding framework on social inclusion will be very useful. So if this tool will come from the United Nations, I believe that member states as part of the United Nations will pick it up and put it in practice. If you do not think of social inclusion as a bottom line for sustainable development, if you don't think of social inclusion as the bottom line for poverty eradication, if you don't think of social inclusion as the bottom line for constructing and maintaining peace, then we are out of business.